Hello everyone, this is Frank with Teaching University, and today we're going to be diving a little bit more into Neville Goddard and some of his work and examining the phrase, what you want, wants you, and what that really means. So we're going to start with a quote from Neville who says that all you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is yours now. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. As the end is accepted, you become totally indifferent as to possible failure for acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. When you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is as though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how that end was achieved. However, having witnessed the end, regardless of any anticlimactic sequence, you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly defined. So a lot to unpack here. So really what I think Neville is, is really pointing out to, and really how we can unpack this, is that for many of us that experience negative emotions such as frustration, anxiety, depression, fear, anger, and so forth, it's because we are focusing ultimately on too much on our external environment or what we don't have. Or we experience negative emotion because we want something, but we do not know how to achieve it. So we're essentially waiting until we get something or achieve something in our external environment. And that when we get that material possession, whatever that is, that's when we'll be happy. We keep waiting until something changes in our external environment to feel a certain way. But what Neville is saying here when it comes to achieving our desires, or goals, or, or just living a better life, it starts to acknowledge, or that we should acknowledge, that what we want is already ours. So what you want, wants you. That your dreams, your desires, what you want is already here now. And to start feeling and cultivating the feelings of, of what it would feel like if what you have is already here, or what you want is already here. That your dreams have already come true. What would that feel like? and cultivate those feelings and emotions. And that's when we start to work on our mental studio by working on the images and thoughts that swirl in our mind that reflect what it is that we want and start acting and becoming the person who would bring these dreams uh, brought forth into your life. Now this could be a little controversial where we start to pray as if our prayers have already been answered because obviously we've been intoxicated by our current circumstances, or we worship at the altar of our circumstances, where we rely too much on our senses or what we can see, rather than also acknowledging that there are also things that we cannot see, or hidden forces within ourselves, and perhaps forces outside of us, whether you believe in God or the power of the universe, nature, whatever you want to call it, or this universal intelligence that's used a lot in, in personal growth, especially when discussing Neville, but that there are forces within you that if you utilize and cultivate and use feeling to bring forth what you want, then you can already achieve your dreams in a moment's notice by calling forth these mental faculties and these higher powers, which use feeling as a way to bring those powers into being. And that's really by thinking about what it is that you want and feeling as if what you want is already yours. And the thing with this also is that it, this is challenging because we don't necessarily know how we're going to get what we want, how the end will be achieved. And I think this is what also creates a lot of, a lot of negative emotion. And this leads to my next slide here. And I use this, this is sort of uh, a similar slide or diagram that Bob Proctor used a lot in his work and really discussing some of the, the topics we're talking about with Neville. So you look at the bottom of the screen. The bottom of the screen represents our current circumstances. Maybe you're at a job you don't like or in a relationship that is, and that is really not going anywhere. Maybe you're in poor health. Uh, maybe you feel neglected or you feel like you're just unsure of what to do with your life. Maybe you know, you're in circumstances that just are not to your liking. Let's just put it that way. And then on the top part of the screen, top right-hand side of the screen, the star represents your dream life what you want to do, the things you want to accomplish. Maybe you want to start your own business, achieve financial independence, find romance, travel, improve your health, improve your faith and spirituality, whatever that may be. 
Those are your dreams on the top right hand side of the screen. And of course, we see this gap. We see this gap here between where we are and where we want to be. So naturally, what we do is we have maybe a vision of what we want to accomplish. And to accomplish that vision, we start to take action. We start to develop strategies. Uh, we take action steps. We get busy. And we think that by staying busy, if we stay busy long enough, then we can achieve that particular goal, that dream, whatever that may be. The problem is that desire can be a double-edged sword because with desire, even though it is a necessary ingredient for creativity, it's a double-edged sword because with desire, we acknowledge that what we want is not in our lives, that we're acknowledging lack, that we're acknowledging that we are feeling a, a sense of emptiness because what we want is not in our lives yet. And it's this feeling of lack that can ultimately hurt our vision towards what we want to accomplish. And actually, this can create and cultivate more negative emotions. Because even if we get that thing, whatever that may be, we still feel lack because we thought that what we want, what we want to accomplish was going to change the way we feel. And we discovered that it didn't. It could actually, we're actually worse off. So rather than waiting to feel a certain way, rather than waiting to accomplish that goal, to feel happy and joyful and abundant, why wait? Start right now. And that's when we start to bridge the gap where no longer are we feeling lack that what we want, our dream life is already here in the present moment now. And that is really the, the, the most important underlying theme of much of Neville's work is that why wait? Start right now to live your dream life. Start to become the person that you've always wanted to be and express your authentic self. And this is something that Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs, and I always reference his hierarchy in many of my lectures, where you look at that pinnacle, the top of the hierarchy of needs, the pinnacle of human experience is authentic creative expression. And that starts with living in the end, living in the present moment where we start to cultivate the feeling of accomplishment and the feeling that our dream life is already here. So again, to quote Neville, he says, sensation precedes manifestation and is a foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Be careful of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of disease. Disease, in both body and environment, do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. So this quote from Neville reminds me of David Hawkins' work or his book, Letting Go, and I've referenced his book as well in some of my lectures. And in David Hawkins' book, Letting Go, what he's really talking about here is that much of the negative emotions we experience are suppressed emotions. We bottle them up. Rather than acknowledging them and accepting them, we suppress them and ignore them. And in order for us to get where we want to be, and again, going back to this chart here, it requires that we have to acknowledge our current circumstances. Now, nowhere, I think, Neville or myself have said that we should deny our current circumstances. No, we need to acknowledge where we are in our lives. Because the only way to get from where we are to where we want to be is that we must acknowledge. We must acknowledge where we are and accept it and let go. Letting go of trying to force an outcome. Letting go of trying to predict when something is going to happen, you know, because one of the, the big mistake that many people make from changing the current circumstances to achieving a goal is that we try to consciously force something to happen. We think that by staying busier, we will somehow bring forth our desires and actually force negates. The harder we try, the more we push away what we want. So it behooves you then to, going back to Neville's quote here and to reference David Hawkins, is to let go. Accept where you are. Accept that you have been experiencing these feelings. And by doing so, then, you can begin to make new choices. You will feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. Because by accepting where you are, accepting that you've been experiencing these emotions, 
or negative emotions without trying to change them through force. We no longer give these negative emotions any energy. And then we can begin to reshift our focus more towards what we want. And when we focus more on what we want, rather than what we don't want, we make new decisions, new choices, and we cultivate new feelings of joy, abundance, peace, and euphoria. That can dramatically transform our lives. And then once we cultivate these positive emotions and feelings, then we can begin manifesting and bringing forth what we want because we're reshifting our focus. And we can begin changing not just our visible world, but also the world within our own minds. And to quote Carl Jung, Carl Jung, he says that your vision will become clear only when you look into your own heart. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. And what Carl Jung is saying is that in order for us to change our external circumstances, to change what's outside of us, we must look within within our own hearts, within our own minds, within the subconscious, and channel these or utilize these higher, deeper mental faculties that we have. And you look at the subconscious. Many of our behaviors and thoughts are totally beneath our consciousness. We don't even realize we're doing them. And when we start to become aware of this and begin to be much more deliberate with how we think and be delivered with content we absorb, because let's face it, there's a lot of negative content out there that can dissuade us or distract us from our vision of a better future. But by cultivating this mental studio that we have of focusing on new horizons and our dreams and what we want and hold on to those dreams and those positive emotions, that's when we truly awaken. We're not relying on our external environment to validate who we really are. We live in the moment or in the present moment. We will become the person we've always wanted to be, not through force, but through acceptance and just this, making the decision with such emotion that we are going to change. And that starts from within. And that's when we truly awaken. I think that's what Carl Jung is suggesting here. And going back to Neville, he says, when you drop your desire in consciousness as a seed, confident that it shall appear in its full-blown potential. You have done all that is expected of you. To be worried or concerned about the matter of their unfoldment is to hold these fertile seeds in a mental grasp and therefore to prevent them from really maturing to full harvest. So it all starts with an idea. The idea maybe that you want abundance, financial independence, romance, a better career, improved mental health, physical health, to travel. To maybe you want to go back to school, maybe you want to pursue sports again, whatever that is. Cultivate this idea into your mind. And when you cultivate it long enough, and when you drop this desire and consciousness and you cultivate it and help and cause it to grow by feeding your mind positive content, by learning. Every time we learn, we develop, develop new neural connections where we rewire our brains thanks to neuroplasticity, where we begin to think in new ways. And we change the old self and embrace the new self. And that starts with an idea. And this could be difficult because sometimes we have all these ideas and dreams and goals we want to accomplish, which is fine. But we want to focus on one thing at a time. And when we do that, that's when our lives can change for the better. So to conclude here, these are two more quotes from Neville. He says, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You do not fight against your problem. Your problem will only live as long as you are conscious of it. Take your attention away from your problem and the multitude of reasons why you cannot achieve your ideal. Concentrate your attention entirely upon the thing desired. So once we accept or acknowledge where we are, perhaps as I said before, maybe we're in poor financial standing, we lost our job. We're not in a good relationship. We're important. Maybe where our health is not where we'd like for it to be. Whatever that may be. Once we acknowledge that, no longer give any attention to it or power. Begin to, again, as I said before, reshift your focus. Not on pro your problems, but on your so solutions and the things that you want. When you give more energy, especially mental energy, to your solutions to these problems or what it is that you want, you no longer 
give any p power to what it is that you don't want. And by making you choices and you decisions, you change the self, you change your personality. And as, as Joe Dispenza says, your personality is your personal reality. And when you change your personality by making you decisions and you choices and cultivate these feelings of abundance, that's when change can really happen. And you realize that your circumstances change without you even realizing it. And for the next quote, and actually Neville is, is quoting William Blake, he says, In your own bosom you bear your heaven and earth and all you behold. Though it appears without, it is within. In your imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. So I think this reinforces Carl Jung's quote where, if you look outside, you dream, but if you look within, awaken. It's cultivating this imagination that we all have, the power of imagination to imagine a better life. And through imagination, we can generate and manifest new possibilities and new experiences we never thought were possible. And unfortunately, however, when it comes to the imagination, we use it to our disadvantage, where we imagine worst case scenarios or bad situations or the worst case scenario that can happen to us, rather than imagining positive outcomes or the things that we want. And by feeling as if the wish is fulfilled and that what you want really wants you, and when you live in the moment where as if what you want is already here in the present moment, that's when life can radically transform for the better. And that's when you can really begin to move in the direction of your dreams. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. And subscribe so you can watch all my lectures on personal growth, wealth building, entrepreneurship, and creativity. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.